ओके फाइन थैंक यू ओके सो वेलकम टू दिस सेशन फ्रेंड्स दिस इज ए सेशन ऑन मल्टीपल टेक्नोलॉजीज एक्चुअली एज यू कैन सी रेड हाइट लाइनिक्स विंडोज सर्वर एज वेल एज एयर प्लेस दर इज योर क्लाउड कंप्यूटिंग ओके Now the big question here is why we are learning like three technologies here are three different courses in this one particular package you can see two servers at linux server at linux server and windows servers two of the most famous servers we have across the globe okay go to any company any country whenever you see a server in majority of cases you will see either a red hat server available there or a windows server available there right okay and then we have a different course a different technology people call it as a different technology that is cloud computing but no cloud computing is a technology where you have multiple technologies added in it and in cloud computing one of the major major thing we have actually is our servers i repeat in cloud computing one of the most important part we have is actually our servers so they are maybe looking at three different courses in one package but actually they all are connected with each other okay and if you can start by saying a very simple statement and that is without having server knowledge if you have to learn cloud computing okay my friend that's too difficult i'm not sure you will get a job without having proper knowledge or proper understanding of servers okay so whether it is linux servers or windows servers majorly linux servers actually okay with it as well as you need to know something about your windows servers okay so cloud computing is a concept where we have different technologies coming together like servers networks security database virtualization and many other things but overall like i said to you the most important part here is servers and the networking part we'll cover networking part in great details in coming time actually but as of now let us try to concentrate more on the servers okay so when you talk about servers what exactly it means actually so normally today if you go and meet or if you talk to any non technical person also they know a bit about servers okay for example if you pay some money through phone pay or google pay what happens there you are connecting to some server and in case if you are not able to pay you will get a message like the server is busy server is busy for example if you want to book some ticket let's say you are traveling to some other destination maybe a ticket or train ticket or bus ticket or whatever and in case if you are not able to book your ticket you will get a message as the server is busy so every now and then we will see this server is busy message in our mobile phone or in our laptop or we will we'll hear from some person like okay server is busy today for example if you are watching a match or if you are watching a movie on any online media and you are not able to you know view or you are not able to get that particular movie clearly or you are not able to watch that match live it is hanging there so normal people say like oh server is busy today so server is something which is very major part of our life server is something which is major part of our computer networks without servers we simply cannot imagine any computer network my friend whether it is our company's network or whether it is your internet without server there is nothing so let us try to understand more about servers so that we know what is there in server as well as how important it is for us to learn about servers to go and make a career in cloud or maybe offer cloud something like devops or maybe something like you know cyber security and all those things okay so the most important part or the most important concept that you need to know as of now in your career is actually about your servers now let us try to elaborate a bit more on servers fine so what is a server here according to definition what it says a server is a computer hardware or a software that provides services to users or clients over a network and the network can be public or private so it's a very big definition here there are many things we need to discuss here 
the first thing here is whenever you talk about a server, there are two things actually. One server is actually your physical server, a physical machine. Okay. And the other server is actually your server operating system. I repeat, one is a physical server and one is your server operating system. So let us try to concentrate on server hardware and then we'll move into the server operating systems. So server hardware is like your desktop or your laptop hardware. It is a hardware machine. So when I say laptop, what comes in your mind? You think of the processor inside that laptop, the storage capacity, RAM, that is your memory, NIC card using which you can connect to the internet, motherboard, all these things come in your mind, right? And then I said desktop, again the same thing will come. So whether it is a laptop or a desktop, it has some configuration. And what are the major components we have there? The major components that we have in a laptop or a desktop are processors, memory, storage, network interface card, and obviously motherboard is it to this motherboard all these other components are connected now when you talk about a server hardware here my friend server hardware is similar to your computer hardware it also have all the hardware components like motherboard processor ram hard disk that is a storage and there is a power supply mm, there is an nic card it is similar to your computer hardware but the difference here is server hardware is more capable. Server hardware is more faster. Server hardware has more storage connected to it. Server processors are much faster than our laptops and desktop processors. In our laptop and desktop, we may have 2 TB of storage. 2 TB of storage is more than enough, right? But you know, once you go to your desktop machine or once you go to your server machine, my friend, in server machine, there can be, you know, 500 TB of storage. 1000 TB of storage, 2000 TB. I'm not saying 2000 GB here, I'm saying 2000 TB of storage. So server hardware has more hardware capabilities compared to laptop and desktop. It should have more hardware capabilities actually. The reason here is what it says, see the definition. Server provides services to users or clients. Now, you are a user, you are a client. I am a user, I am a client. See, as of now, the time is 7.15 a.m. in the standard time. At this particular time, it is quite early morning, right? Still, it is early morning. But as of now, 7.15, can you guess how many people are connected to Google? How many people are connected to Facebook? Or maybe Instagram or maybe phone pay or WhatsApp? So what we do actually, once we woke up, we just go to WhatsApp and we just try to check our messages, right? So see how many people are connected to all these particular applications as of now. Obviously, it will be in some millions, right? Within our country, India, millions of people are connected to this particular application. Now, the question here is, where exactly is this application running? Where is this application running? Obviously, this application is running on a server. So if millions of people are connected to that particular server here, friends, and just imagine if this server hardware is not that much capable, it is not that much faster, can it handle that, many tra that much traffic? Answer is no. So the first thing that we need to understand about a server is, server is a hardware machine, and this hardware machine should have high hardware configuration, more hardware configuration. Okay, so then only it can serve its purpose like for example if you go with your laptop or desktop how much time you have in your laptop let's say 8 gb 16 gb 24 gb 32 gb is very rare till today right although we have 64 gb ram uh, 64 gb laptops also but hardly you see people using a laptop with 32 gb in very special cases only we will see people using 32 gb ram but in servers you will have hundreds of gb of memory hundreds of gb of ram Okay, so I hope you understood now why a server needs more hardware. A server needs more hardware because it is connected. Hundreds and thousands of people are connected to that particular server to get services from it. So what are the services? Services can be like your email service, 
web service, file service, database service, okay, your WhatsApp, that is your messenger service, YouTube, you can stream something there, Netflix, you can stream something there, so there are different services available. Got it? Now, let us jump into the next part of our server. Remember I told you, if you know the concept of server well, it will be very easy for you to understand many things in networking actually, many things in IT. Okay, especially cloud and all these technologies, it will be easy for you to understand if you know the concept of server. So one part of server is your hardware. Okay, now before we move into the software server, software part of server, let me just make one thing very clear here. Listen friends, chat box is always open for you. Whenever you have any message, whenever you have any questions, feel free to send a message in the chat box so that I can come to your question at the earliest. This is not a recorded session, right? This is a live session. So if you want to utilize your live session properly, try to interact with the trainer. At least at the end of this session, if you can, you know, send your questions to me, it will be great advantage for you as well as to the other participants. Got it? So please try to utilize your chat box every time. Till the end of this course, actually, chat box will be open. Okay, fine. Now, so let us move into the software part, the operating system part. See, again, this is a very simple thing we know, right? What is that thing? Every hardware machine needs an operating system for that machine to run. And obviously, server is a hardware machine. And what we need in server? In server, we need the server operating system. I repeat, in server, we need the server operating system. Without the server operating system, a server hardware is simply a dummy device, a useless device. I repeat again, friends, without the server operating system, a server machine is just a hardware device. It will not run. It will not work. So with server hardware, we need server operating system. Now, in server machine, what are the operating systems we have? Or what are the operating systems we install? Now, can you see those two names there? Red Hat, Linux, or let us say Linux actually. And then you can see Windows servers. Now, across the globe, 95 to 97% cases, any country, any company, wherever, whatever the business it may be. 95 to 97% cases, a server may have a Linux server operating system or Windows server operating system. See friends, again, this is a very big statement. Try to understand what I'm trying to say here. Across the globe, just imagine how many servers are there across the globe. Easily in some millions or billions actually. So on all these millions and millions of servers, the operating system that is running as of now, as of today is, that is 28th August 2024 is, it can be a Linux server or it can be a Windows server. Okay, now we can have a debate. Like in Linux server, there are many different Linux available like Linux Red Hat, a Linux Ubuntu and many more. And coming to Windows servers, they have some versions like Windows Server 2022, 2019, 2016. So we can have a separate session for it, like which version or which distribution is used on a server. But if I say generally, majority of servers across the globe, see 95% is a very big majority, right? If I say 51% also, there is a majority. But what I'm saying here, 95 to 97% servers across the globe, they are running either on Linux servers or either on Windows servers. Now, the server can be there within your company that is called on-premises server or on-premises network. A physical server is there within your company or a server is there somewhere in cloud. Server is there somewhere in cloud. So whether it is your on-premises network or a server in cloud, we are running that server on either a Linux server operating system or on Windows server operating system. So this one single statement is more than enough for me to you know, say that server learning is obviously the most important for most important part for you in your career. Maybe in future you have to go 
completely into Red Hat administration. Maybe in future you want to go completely into Windows administration or Windows Cloud, Microsoft Cloud that is your Azure. Or maybe in future you want to go with AWS or maybe DevOps or cyber security. And there are many options available, right? But again, so if you want to succeed in any of these things, my friend, your knowledge, your understanding, your expertise on Linux servers and Windows servers should be very good. Although majorly people are planning to go with cloud nowadays, but you know, once you apply for jobs, you will see many job opportunities on Linux servers as well as Windows servers. But it, you will have many opportunities on Linux servers as well as on Windows servers. So it's not only about cloud. Every company is running their application or storing the data somewhere and there we have these servers. So we are not yet moved into cloud. We have not yet seen anything about cloud here actually, my friend. We are simply trying to understand the importance of server. If you understood the importance of server here, my friend, it will be easy for you to understand cloud computing and the other technologies. Got it? So let me just go to this screen again and say this is your server. It is indeed a machine, hardware machine, but now we can call it as a virtual machine or we have one more option actually called virtual machine. What is virtual machine? That is what we need to understand in great details in our cloud computing concept. But anyhow, as of now, server is a machine which can be a hardware machine or which can be a virtual machine. So whether it is a server hardware machine or whether it is a server virtual machine, these servers will not run until and unless there is a server operating system installed in it. And which server operating system we have majorly, like I said you, Linux, Linux and Windows servers. <clears throat> okay. Now I have a question here. Okay, I think the question is, are we going to cover DevOps here? See, DevOps is after, you know, Windows, Linux servers and AWS, then you have to go with DevOps. This is a package on server administration and cloud administration. See, to reach DevOps, first you have to complete your server administration part, the cloud administration part, then you are eligible for your DevOps. Directly, you cannot learn DevOps, my friend. Got it? Okay, so I hope it is clear about server. Hmm? So the next thing that we need to understand here is what exactly we do on server. Okay, we have a server machine, a big server machine with very high configuration. And then we have installed Windows server operating system there or maybe any Linux operating system there. Great. But what we do after installing the server operating system. You can see clearly there, my friend. After installing the server operating system, we can simply go and run applications there. So here, can you see applications and services? After installing the server operating system, we can run our applications here. Now, when I say application or service, what it means? Okay, let me just tell you one thing here, friends. Actually, I'm on power backup for last more than one hour, actually. So maybe the power backup will be there with me for under five, 10 minutes. So in case if I go off suddenly, please do join the session tomorrow. Tomorrow also we have a demo. Okay, so at least we have three demo sessions where we'll try to understand what we are going to learn in this particular package. Okay, so I repeat, in case if you see me going off suddenly, this is because of the power failure in my locality. For last one hour, there is no power. I am on my UPS for last one hour. So maybe for after five minutes, my UPS also will lose all the energy. Very sorry for this inconvenience. Hopefully I'll, I'll get back my power within like next five minutes. Let's see what happens. Okay, so as of now, what we were discussing, we know what is a server hardware. We know what is a server operating system. Now we said the reason for taking a server hardware by spending some thousands of dollars and the reason for taking a server operating system by spending huge money is to run applications, to run services. Now, if I say applications or services, 
it means whatever you connect to over the internet from your mobile phone or from your laptop or from your tablet or anywhere to whichever website you connect here my friend that particular website comes under the application category see let's say yesterday 27th august how many things you might have access in your mobile phone let's say phone pay or google pay whatsapp instagram your emails youtube hmm? netflix or hotstar or something like this you access all these things every day right from your mobile phone or from your desktop or laptop these are actually your applications <clears throat> So next time when you connect to a phone pay application or YouTube application or Netflix or any other application, just remember one thing, my friend, that application is running somewhere on a server operating system, which can be Windows or Linux. And that Windows or Linux server operating system is running on a server hardware with high configuration. This is a story in background. This is the way all the servers are running across the globe. And see, this is you and me. We are users. We are users, we are simply connecting to our applications and servers. Got it? So to run the applications, any application, a web application or email application, file application, okay, see here, gaming application, banking application, any social media application, anything my friend to run any application any software anything we need to follow this architecture okay so what is this architecture take a server hardware take the server operating system and run the application okay so to go to any company like i said you these are the two major servers we have Red Hat Linux or Linux servers actually again. I should not say Red Hat again and again. Although we are learning Red Hat Linux here, but there are different distributions actually. So overall Linux servers and this Windows servers. So without having proper understanding or proper knowledge of these two servers, it is close to, you know, impossible for us to start our career in this particular field. I know many people will learn cloud computing directly. You know, with some basics of Linux, you will learn cloud computing directly. Listen, one thing, friends. With basics of Linux, you can learn cloud computing. But with basics of Linux, you cannot work on cloud computing. That's a huge difference. You can learn, but you cannot work. So what's the use of learning if you're not able to work? So Linux administration is what you need to learn, not the basics of Linux. Basics of Linux we can cover in one, uh, one week. Administration will take 35 days or 40 days or at least 35 days. So this is a difference. There is a huge difference here, my friend. Once you finish this particular package, where you're learning about Linux administration, Windows Server administration, and cloud computing. In cloud computing, you're learning about AWS. So once you finish this particular package here, my friend, you're eligible to apply for a job on three different platforms or three different job roles, actually. Within one company, you can apply for a job on three different job roles. That means you are increasing your job opportunities. You may get a job as a Linux administrator or as a Windows administrator or as a cloud administrator in one company. Let's say companies ABC in that one company. If you just go with AWS in that company, you will work on, you will try to apply for a job only on cloud computing. But if you have the knowledge of Red Hat and Windows servers, now you are job opportunities will increase. Okay, there is a question here. Which topics or what topics we are going to learn in our Red Hat Linux? See, I'll come to all the details of the uh, course that we are going to learn here. Hopefully, once you finish this demo session, people, uh, the Durgasom management, they will share all the details with you, the syllabus. Just go through the syllabus today. When you come tomorrow, we can have some discussion on that particular syllabus. I repeat, Syllabus will be shared with you once you finish your, once you finish our this introduction session, the demo session. Okay, what we are learning in Red Hat, what we are learning in cloud, all these things you'll be going to get through an email. Okay, I'll do one thing, friends. I'll just share something.
if you have any questions or doubts regarding this particular course or package and if you want to contact me you can contact me on this number on this uh, mail id actually okay and Yeah, I have just shared some details with you in chat box. So if you have any other queries after completing this session, also if you have any queries or doubts, feel free to contact me on this particular given details. Okay, so check your uh, chat box, you'll get all the details. There. Anyhow, so as of now, what I said here, learning Linux administration and Windows administration should be like mandatory for you to, you know, make a great career in this particular field. So you're not making a career only for like one year or two years, right? You're trying to make a career for your rest of your life for next two, three, 10, 20, 15, 30 years. So if you want to survive in this industry for rest of your life, then server administration is a very major part. So if you want to go on top, you need to climb steps here, right? So the starting steps is your server administration. So if you skip your two, three steps, it's very hard for you to reach on fifth step or sixth step, right? What it so what we are learning inside Red Hat Linux administration and Windows, how we are learning Windows administration, that's a different uh, uh, discussion. Hopefully that we will do by tomorrow because as of now, again, very sorry. Till now I have not got my power pack, but I'm very, you know, at least we have taken a session for at least 35 minutes. Hopefully, hopefully we'll continue as far as possible. But in case if you see me going off suddenly, that is because of power failure in my locality. It never happens or it happens very occasionally and power will be back within like 5 to 10 minutes. But today, it has taken like more than one and a half hour actually. Let's see. Let's see how it goes. Okay. So meanwhile, if you have any doubts, any questions, feel free to send your questions in chat box. Okay. And I think coming to cloud computing or AWS, how Red Hat and Windows servers are related to AWS, what we can do with this Red Hat Linux and Windows servers on AWS, Hopefully, we'll see in great details in our tomorrow session. Tomorrow also we have a demo session and Friday also we have a demo session. We have three demo sessions. So hopefully in these three days, you will get perfect idea of Linux servers, Windows servers, as well as cloud. You should know where exactly you are moving in your career. See, if I say about me, I will never just pick up a bag and just go outside my home and just go to some airport or railway station or bus station thinking that, okay, I need to go somewhere. No, right? I need to plan everything before. Okay, from Hyderabad, suppose I'm planning to go to Kashmir. I need to plan everything. I have to go to somewhere like, let's say, uh, Kerala. I have to go somewhere to like Mumbai, somewhere to like Kolkata. I have to plan everything before and then my journey will have some meaning there. So these demo sessions are for that purpose only, my friend. Just to have a discussion where we know where we are moving what we are learning and where this learning will take us in our career. Okay. So I hope you understood a bit about servers. So the bottom line here is without servers, we cannot imagine anything over the internet, anything inside a company. And these servers can be there within your company that is called on-premises servers or we can have a server somewhere on cloud. Cloud computing is, is indeed a very, you know, famous job or famous technology we have across the globe for some years now. And for many, many years to come, cloud technology will be a very hot, hot, you know, technology to learn to perceive a career. But as of now, due to some time restrictions and all those things, I'm not moving into cloud. Hopefully tomorrow we can have a great discussion on cloud. I'll just take you through my cloud account and I'll show you how things will work there. Let me just go through this cloud account. Meanwhile, again, if you have any doubts,
you can simply ping me on the given details there in chat box after the session or as of now if you want to ping something you can ping something now okay so my what my what you say power backup is exhausting actually very fast one hour is over actually anyhow see I'll just show you something. Actually, I'm in my cloud, AWS cloud. When I say launch instance here, don't worry what is this launch instance and all those things. What you see here, Amazon Linux, Ubuntu Linux, Microsoft Linux, Red Hat Linux. So the first thing actually we do in our cloud is we create a server. And can you see Red Hat Linux and Microsoft Linux here? Clearly, clearly you can see that, my friend. Okay, clearly you can see the Linux and the Microsoft servers mentioned in AWS cloud. If you go with Microsoft Cloud or Google Cloud or any other cloud platform, my friend, one of the most important thing that we do in any cloud is actually we need to create a server and launch a server. We need to run a server without learning how to create, how to launch, how to provide security, how to run application on a server. There is no cloud computing service, my friend. I repeat, the, the one of the most important service we have in cloud is actually running a server. And inside that server, what we have? Inside that server, we have maybe a Windows server operating system or majorly we can have any Linux. It can be Amazon Linux, it can be Ubuntu Linux, or it can be Red Hat. If you know Red Hat, you can easily manage Ubuntu or AWS Linux or any other Linux. So these are the two different servers we have. So these are the two servers we are learning actually. Normally people go only with Linux servers, but again, Microsoft is a huge part of our computer networks right okay there is a question here how many days it will take to complete red hat linux it will take around you know 35 days for us to complete the red hat linux administration let's say if we start linux administration today after a couple of weeks we'll start our aws it will be like this if i start linux administration on monday after a couple of weeks we need to go with our aws services okay and who can learn this AWS services? This is a very major question. Let me just show you one thing. Uh, this is the thing. These are the people who can learn this Linux administration, uh, the AWS administration or AWS action. First thing is you should have proper understanding and proper knowledge on operating systems, Linux and Windows. The other major thing here, you can see the second one is actually you should have proper understanding of networking. I have seen many cases in last many years, friends who directly learn cloud computing without having proper networking knowledge. You know, there is a course called CCNA. It's a very famous course in IT for last many decades. I was planning to add complete CCNA in this particular package, but you know, the package will go for like three months or three and a half months. So what I did here is whatever things are very important from networking that we need to know to learn cloud computing. I have added all those things actually. IP address and subnetting is the backbone of any computer network. We will see IP address and subnetting in great details. Firewall is a very important part for us to learn in cloud computing as well as on-premise network. So all these things we are going to cover actually. So who can learn cloud computing here, friends? People who have the knowledge of Windows servers and Linux servers and people who know the networking concepts well, these are the people who are eligible to learn cloud computing. So you're not starting cloud computing on day one. You will start Linux administration. Then after a couple of weeks, you'll go with the cloud computing concept. So you'll finish Linux first. Then after like two, three weeks, you'll finish your AWS. So within next two to two and a half months, you will complete Linux. You'll get all the things that are needed for you from Windows servers. And as well as you'll go with your AWS. And I'll be handling all the three courses actually. Red Hat Linux, Windows servers, as well as AWS. Got it? I'll be handling all these three courses. Okay, so I'm here for like at least a couple of minutes. Hopefully, my backup stays for at least two more minutes. So if you have any doubts or any other questions, you can clear your doubts here itself or else like I shared some details about me. So if you want to contact me on those details, feel free to send your message. So joining, not joining, learning, not learning, it's a different case. But again, if you want to learn or if you want to, you know, have some interaction with me, any other questions which you need to clear?
feel free to send your questions on those details actually i have more than you know 14 years 15 years of experience in this industry my friend i have you know experience on different technologies like windows linux networking virtualization cloud and all those things i have experience on many things okay so over to you now i'll be here for like 30 more seconds so if you have any doubt we will see or else we can simply stop the session for today and please do join tomorrow we'll go with more details tomorrow about cloud computing server administration and what else we can do after learning this cloud computing and server administration all these things we'll see probably in our tomorrow session Yeah, all good, sir. Thank you. Yeah, that's it, my friend. That's it for the day. And Thank probably you. we'll meet again tomorrow at the same time, 7 a.m. India Standard Time. Okay, so this is the time for demo as well as at this particular time, we will start our Linux administration also regular classes. Okay, so hopefully next couple of days, we'll just try to dig a bit more into the cloud and the server so that you will have the perfect idea like where exactly you will be moving in your career. I always say this, without having the proper plan you should not move forward so in next couple of days we'll just try to make a plan okay so hopefully if you follow that plan you will have a great and successful career in this particular industry many job opportunities are there for sure mm. as of now you know things are not so good across the globe but still these technologies without these technologies the it industry or the internet or the computer networks they cannot survive so maybe there is a lean period as of now. Maybe there is a downfall as of now. But again, I repeat, my friend, without these technologies, you cannot imagine internet. You cannot imagine any computer network. It is not like within next couple of years, cloud will vanish from this tech, from this IT industry or Red Hat servers or Windows servers will go somewhere. No, my friend. No. The only thing that can happen to these servers and the cloud is it will simply grow. That is the only thing that can happen. Without this, we simply cannot use our internet. Now, this is a very big statement, right? I'm saying without these technologies, we cannot use internet. So if you can't use internet without this, just imagine how big that is. So if you go and search internet, 15 years before, there were some technologies which were not available today. Hmm? But, you know, coming to this, Okay, I'll just try to show you something. That's how it goes. I'm not sure how many people know this actually. It was a social networking site. Hmm? It was founded in the year 2004 and dissolved in the year 2014. The same thing can happen with Facebook, right? There is a possibility. I'm not saying like it will happen. I'm saying there is a possibility. Facebook social media app can go. A new social media app can come. Like Instagram is quite famous today. It can go due to any reason or due to many reasons it can go. People start, you know, uninstalling it. So at the end of the day, after some time, maybe the company can shut down. The app can be completely gone. There is a possibility. So if Facebook or Instagram is gone completely in next five years, you may see some other app coming actually with much better features and with much better options. But whether it is Facebook whether it is Instagram or whatever was there before and whatever will come in future, all these things will be running on server operating system and on a server machine. So this technology, what you're going to learn in coming days and weeks will be there for sure for rest of our life. Okay, so that's it for the day, friends. Thanks for joining and hope to see you again tomorrow at same time, 7 a.m. India Standard Time and hopefully we'll go a bit deep into servers and then we'll move into cloud so that you'll get the perfect picture that's it i'm here for like 30 seconds any questions send in the chat box or if you want to contact me you have all the details thanks a lot friends